Sometimes, the danger is not around the corner, it's actually under your butt. Modern motorcycles are incredibly safe, thanks to rider aids like ABS, traction control, and wheelie control, but not all older bikes were dangerous either. Most bikes in the past have balanced performance and safety very well, and perhaps the reason why modern bikes would feel so dangerous without rider aids is the power punch they carry. Take the older super sports, for example, that didn't come with any electronics but were still manageable by an appropriately experienced rider. That's not to say all motorcycles ever built were safe for riders. Manufacturers have pushed out some not-so-fine examples that have proven to be a quick ticket to the hospital for many bikers. And for the few unlucky ones, these bikes have been a ticket to the afterlife. Some of these motorcycles are not designed right, and they will make you question what the engineers were actually thinking. And there are a few motorcycles that are just moody or finicky. These are the most dangerous motorcycles ever made. Vincent Black Shadow, 1955 The Vincent Black Shadow is one of the milestone motorcycles in the drop-dead gorgeous bike to behold, sometimes, quite literally. The bike was a game-changer, but it was far from perfect even for its time. This magnificent piece of engineering was exhilarating to ride as long as you didn't lean it around a curve. Put simply, the Vincent Black Shadow was a nightmare around corners, with a chassis that bent all the wrong ways and brakes that took your braking command as more of a suggestion, maybe, it will stop, maybe, it won't. Remember to at gat when riding this motorcycle if you ever get a chance. Yamaha V-Max, 1985 You'll find that most motorcycles on this list are legendary, perhaps this is what it takes to push the boundaries. The Yamaha V-Max was one of them. This drag strip beast was one of the first power cruisers with a sole focus, a ridiculous quarter mile time. But in almost every other regard, this bike was a disaster waiting to happen. The handling was scary and didn't inspire any confidence, the brakes felt like they belonged on a moped, and the bike didn't have any electronics to keep the wheels in line. The result is a hair-raising riding experience that may not always end in your favor. Harley-Davidson Sportsters, Early 70s This isn't the first time Harley-Davidson is facing tough waters, back in the late 70s, it was going through another one of its phases after the American machine and foundry company buyout. During this messy time, this American giant released the Sportster, but none of its features were as shiny as its chrome. The engines weren't reliable or fast, the handling was vague and heavy, and they were perhaps the most cumbersome motorcycles to own then. Fortunately, they were so unreliable that they broke down before riders could crash them. Harley-Davidson V-Rod The Harley-Davidson V-Rod was a gorgeous power cruiser, but in many ways, it led to a fate that was quite similar to that of the V-Max, suddenly, the similarity in the name makes much more sense, doesn't it? The V-Rod was the fastest Harley of the time, Thanks, Porsche, and it was terrific on straight roads, but with only 30 degrees of cornering clearance, it was downright dangerous to turn. Lean a little more, and the belly would scrape, lifting the rear wheel off the ground and sending you on a sideways slide. This was a major design flaw but not a major concern since no sane person would try to corner on this long, low-slung motorcycle. Ducati Street Fighter 1098S the 1098 was a direct rival to the likes of the Triumph Speed Triple, but it handled much better and looked much hotter. It was essentially a 1098 superbike with a slightly detuned engine, no fairings, and wider handlebars, everything on the bike was top spec. And for many of its fans, it is one of the last analog and naked bikes. The only safety net you have when riding this bike is your brain, and if you didn't respect the bike, it would show you who's boss. Spoiler alert, it's not you. Suzuki TL1000S The Suzuki TL1000S is an iconic bike, but what stopped this bike from being one of the most influential Japanese motorcycles was its rear suspension. Thanks to its massive V-twin engine, which was literally crammed into the chassis, 
not leaving room for the rear shock. So, Suzuki lifted the shock, damper, and spring set up from 90s Formula 1 racing to keep the wheelbase short. It was, no doubt, a sharp sport bike to ride, until the rear shock's oil heated up, causing the rear to go completely soft and undamped. Suddenly, you had a powerful sport bike, mid-corner, with a saggy rear end that handled like a boat in rough waters. Yikes! Suzuki Hayabusa A ticket to heaven The Suzuki Hayabusa needs no introduction, and perhaps this is the reason why this is one of the most dangerous motorcycles ever built, not because it's unsafe to ride, but because it's accessible. The Hayabusa is revolutionary, capable of incredible speeds, cornering ability despite the long wheelbase, and surprising touring comfort. But the fact that any rider with a fresh license can go and pick up this beast is a problem. Novice riders cannot handle this bike's performance and shouldn't test its patience, especially the older Gen 1s with no electronics. One whiskey throttle, and your head over wheels on the road. Kawasaki H2750 Many motorcycles have earned the Widowmaker title, but none deserve it more than the Kawasaki H2750. This three-cylinder two-stroker was about as crazy as a bike could get in the 1970s, quite similar to the current-day H2 and H2R. The Kawasaki H2750 focused on speed, producing over 75 horsepower, but its Achilles heel was the chassis that flexed more than a mumble wrapper and brakes that would fail to stop a commuter, let alone a superbike. Fortunately, Kawasaki reworked the steering geometry and extended the swing arm to make it more stable, but it still left a lot to be desired when it comes to handling. Kawasaki H2 and H2R Good luck! While speaking of KH750 H2, how can we forget the modern-day equivalent? The Kawasaki H2 and H2R twins are the fastest mass-production motorcycles of today, and they will go down in history as two of the craziest motorcycles ever produced. The supercharged engine produces ridiculous horsepower and a staggering low-end torque, a recipe for the best smiles per gallon but also unspeakable disasters. The Kawasaki H2 and H2R motorcycles are incredibly safe, thanks to the array of electronics and rider aids. Still, they are also still dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. Graf Superior SS100 A masterpiece that deserves utmost respect and reverence and a steady hand. Think about it, a bike designed in the 1920s that produced 50 to 75 horsepower, depending on the model, when a bike with 15 horsepower was considered powerful. That was the Braff Superior SS100, made before World War II, when technology was still rudimentary, and motorcycles at the time weren't designed to corner or go fast. They were designed to be faster than a bicycle, but the SS100 was designed to go faster than all the other bikes. Yet, Graf Superior managed to cram over 50 horses in an unstable chassis with tires that lacked grip and brakes that had a mind of their own. The Graf Superior SS100 is a legendary motorcycle from a legendary brand often nicknamed the Rolls-Royce of motorcycles. But it claimed many lives, including T.E. Lawrence, or the Lawrence of Arabia, who had many Braff Superiors to his name.